And maybe this is such a strong message or a, st a strong part of this message because this might be slightly out of character for this individual that we're speaking of. Normally this person really wouldn't sit down and get deep about it and just like really think about it. They would be that one to escape from it, to push it away, to be like, nah, whatever, we're not gonna fucking deal with that. Like that's bullshit, I don't wanna talk about that. Get that out of my face. Not anymore. Something caused somebody to really take a step back and be like, okay, no, what the fuck really is going on here? Like, what is this shit? Hello everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. So this is going to be your general energy reading for your day, yes? Or maybe for whenever this reading resonates for you yeah please keep in mind that this is a general reading so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't also this is a timeless reading so yes this is a daily reading however it doesn't have to apply to today or it could apply to any moment in your life if you were guided to watch this reading but things don't quite make sense right now maybe just stick a pin in it and come back to it later it most likely will resonate for you later on down the road yeah Happy Wednesday, happy hump day, yes. I hope you guys are having a good week so far. Um, I have to admit, I'm feeling a little like kind of weird and off today. It's not a bad thing, it just feels weird. And it might have to do with the fact that I did happy hour yesterday instead of today. However, um, I have decided even though it felt weird, or at least it feels weird now, um, doing it at the time, like doing happy hour on Tuesday, yesterday, felt weird, but it felt good. And so I think I wanna keep it there. It feels like Tuesday is the right day for that right now, just because of the way my week flows and all that. So there's that, yay. So I'm sorry if you missed it. It did, ha it did happen to be a, um, a shorter session, just because, I was just trying to go with the flow and, you know, I know some of you like Claudia and OG, y'all, um, y'all said, mentioned that you missed it, but that's okay. Next week, we'll do it again. Don't worry. It'll, it'll happen again. But yeah, Tuesday is feeling like the right day for it right now. So there's that. Anyway, again, I hope you guys are having a good week. I hope you're doing well today. I hope you're feeling better today than maybe you have in the past. Um, we're just gonna get into this here. So we're sticking, keeping with the vice versa tarot. And we will get, be getting closing oracle guidance. No, I'm sorry, uh, clarity from the Los Caraveo deck and then crossing that oracle guidance bridge when we get there. Yes? All right, y'all. Let's get into this here and see what messages, what do we wanna talk about today? Let's do this. All right, here we go. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve their highest good and the highest good of all involved. Please give us clear and accurate representation of the energies in terms of the places, situations, situationships, ro romances, relationships, and circumstances in which we all need it the most. Thank you so very much, Spirit. What's the matter with you, Jinx? No. Jinx came in for something, but apparently I wasn't paying attention, enough attention to her, so she went away. Whatever. Five, five shuffles. Here we go. One. Hold on. Let's try that again. One. There we go. Two. I'm having trouble shuffling the cards today, you guys. I, I was shuffling a little bit before I started. This is three. 
and after a while they were just like, can you stop shuffling us please? And I was like, oh, all right, my bad. Three. This is four. And five. Alrighty, y'all. So let's see what we've got for today. What do we want to discuss today? What's going on in the collective today? What's going on here? What's going on here? All right. Six of Wands, overall energy, with the Six of Pentacles on the other side. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. Six of Wands, Six of Pentacles. The Six of Wands came out yesterday, I believe. However, the energy that we're referring to today might be slightly different than what we were talking about yesterday. Of course, now when I think, now that I think about it off the top of my head, what, <laughs> what was the message yesterday? I don't quite remember. Again, my mind is a little bit elsewhere today, and yet it doesn't feel like it's a bad thing, but also I have to ask you to please bear with me because <laughs> I'm feeling quite spacey today. Um, I'm trying to remember what we were talking about yesterday. It's not coming to me. It's fine. Um, I'm j I just, I say this to say that I feel like this Six of Wands is talking about some, oh, we were fighting for ourselves yesterday. And maybe, and actually, okay, now that I think about it, maybe this might be a similar energy to what yesterday was talking about. But we have the daylight scene, okay? It's a much brighter scene here with the Six of Wands. The Six of Pentacles is a nighttime scene. To me, to me, this is somebody looking at... Well, this person is looking down over like a town, right? Or a village. And to me, this is this is representing someone looking over their domain, their life as it stands right now, um, what they have around them, what they've built around them, what you've built around them, everything that, you know, your life is at the moment. And maybe thinking back or just thinking it over in terms of whether or not something really is reciprocal or not. It feels like something is coming to a close here with this Six of Pentacles and this nighttime scene. It's like the sun has set on something and you're left with the memories of what it was. Well, or maybe even what it is, but you know, I feel like it's changing. And then the Six of Wands here is still representing the victory for you um, but I feel like maybe how you've overcome the situation or what it is you've overcome in this situation is more in the forefront of your mind. I feel like this might really be your focus right now, how you've survived, how you've overcome, how you've overcome a situation that may not have been reciprocal, may not have been balanced. I just, I, with that six of pentacles energy, I feel like this is someone looking over their life or looking over their domain as somewhat of a leader or a provider in this sense. And just, I keep, I guess what I want to say is reminiscing, but when I, when I, when I want when I say the word reminisce, I feel like it has a better feeling than this might actually have. Also, nostalgia is a word that comes to mind, but again, I don't feel like it's all that happy. I don't know. <sighs> Excuse me. Let's um, let's go a little bit deeper into this. The first card that came out is the Three of Pentacles. So to me, this is talking about doing the self work, self mastery, and it's not like and it's not the side of the Three of Pentacles where we have like multiple people. On this side, there are two people working together. On this side, it's just this person, and I feel like this is the architect, because normally it's the three. The Three of Pentacles represents a clergyman, an architect, or a businessman, and then a worker, right? <laughs> I guess you could say kind of like a grunt, you know, doing the grunt work. But 
in this deck it's split up these this is the clergyman and this is the the you know the the worker or the carpenter and then here is the businessman or the architect all right but on this side of the card it's just this person and so this is talking about being the architect of your life okay what else do we have here we have the hanged man with the six of swords the king of cups the two of swords the two of cups yikes and then justice but on justice, it's this side of the justice card in which we see the scales of balance have been ca have been ca tossed aside. The sword of justice is stuck into the ground and it looks like it's been there for a while because there's a vine growing on it. Um, and then we have this, oh God, I can never remember the name of this. Is this ba Bastet or something? But it's the God of the Underworld. <sighs> And on this side of the card, it represents how, you know, justice may have been thrown into the wind and, um, you know, this demon of the underworld, I guess you could say. Um, it, it, I don't remember the name of, the, of this god or, or demon, whatever, but um, it's basically, it's the entity that carries souls down to, to the underworld. And when, and on this side of the card, it's like this, this individual or this being has been left to run, run amok. So it can just collect souls at its fancy, at its leisure without any real rhyme or reason or anything sort of saying, hey, yeah, you deserve to go down here. You don't, this, that, and the third. Um, however, I feel like this is part of the overall energy, this injustice element to it. And what this is, what this, and also this feels like, this feels like a past energy here, right? Because this it feels like this situation or this circumstance is now part of your past, which is why I was getting energies of like reminiscing or being nostalgic or just looking back on the past and what it is you created, created and specifically I just heard what it has become. And ultimately what has developed in this situation, how this situation has developed has led you to work on bettering yourself. There is a change in perspective that you have gained in terms of this situation, the hanged man. The hanged man also kind of represents, the hanged man represents enlightenment, but it also represents enlightenment through difficulty because this person is literally hung here, um, looking at things upside down or looking at things from a different perspective or a different position, which ultimately helps to, helps you to see something differently helps you to gain a different perspective, sometimes maybe a better perspective, and also helps lead you towards a sense of enlightenment because now that you have this change of perspective, you can approach things differently, you can see things differently all around, potentially, okay? But with this change in perspective comes shift, a shift, movement. The Six of Swords and then the King of Cups. And the King of Cups represents uh, emotional maturity, emotional stability, emotional balance. And there is a lot of nighttime here. There's a lot of nighttime scenes that are showing up here. You have it on the Six of Pentacles until the sun shines on it. Mm -hmm. You have it on the Six of Pentacles. You have it here in, De in Justice, right? You have it here on the King of Cups. You have it here on the Six of Swords. You also have it here on the Two of Swords, okay? Um, ironically enough, though, the Two of Cups, which is with the Six to Two of Swords, is the daytime scene, all right? So what I'm getting from this so far is that these nighttime scenes are representing how the sun has set on a certain situation, and now this is time for you to go within and check internally to see how you feel about this. Some of you are even making the decision to move on, to move forward in somewhat of a secretive way, or maybe if it's not secretive, I don't feel like it's really you're trying to be deceptive. I just feel like you're trying to get going or get moving under the cover of darkness because then that way it will be less of a strenuous or a less of a stressful thing. Um, you're not trying to make a big deal out of it. You're just trying to, in some cases, I just heard you're just trying to cut your losses and move forward. Okay. Um, I feel like somebody here has turned their back on a relationship that was, that has been imbalanced, unreciprocal, and what I'm getting with the Two of Swords here is 
you have a, a pretty strong peace of mind here. Um, I feel like you've come to a realiz realization of what the elements of this relationship have really been. And with the sun having set on it, I feel like you, like in your mind, you've made your decision, you've come to terms with it, and it's settled. Okay, so that's, I'm kind of getting that with this two of swords energy. You got your back turned, the, the sun has set, the moon is rising, your intuition is in the forefront, or at least how you feel about something internally is in the forefront of your mind, and that's where you're making your decision from, and it feels like you're not really willing to... What I'm hearing is give this another shot, give this another chance, try again. It feels like the reality of the relationship has come to the forefront of your mind, or you've made the decision, you've found the understanding, you recognize how things have been unjust, but then you also recognize that there is some work that you need to be doing on yourself moving forward, maybe so that you, do, you don't or you can't recreate this situation, this type of situation again. This King of Cups energy is definitely representing a sense of emotional maturity. Um, but there's almost a sorrowful energy in terms of this. And like, I feel like you've come to terms with a lot and um, it's this, it just feels like Maybe there's a there's a good amount of disappointment involved because maybe the situation didn't turn out the way you expected or the way that you had wanted to, um, or it just progressed in a way that you did not expect. I just repeated myself, but ultimately, what however it is you're moving forward in this situation, you're you're doing the right thing. You're doing what's right for you. It's just not the easiest thing to come to terms with. I just feel like there's this a sense of sorrow. A little bit of sense of sorrow, regret, disappointment that's coming through with this emotional realization, okay? Regret is also a word that's coming to mind here. Very much an energy like, oof, I'll never do that again. Or, wow, sorry I got into that. And yet, you've grown from this. There is a level of emotional maturity here that I'm feeling very strongly. So even though you may be regretting getting into this situation, or you may be really upset at the way that, that it turned out, there is still a sense of strong emotional growth in this situation. So I really want to say, don't waste your energy feeling regret for something that's happened, or maybe even, I guess, for something that you've done. Because ultimately, what, the, what matters is that you learned something from it, you grew from it, and that's really all we can hope for here. I mean, making mistakes or fucking up, like that's part of life. That's part of existence. That's part of us learning through the contrast. That's part of us living our experience so that we can learn, so that we can grow, so that we can expand can expand and heal, okay? So, so even if you feel like you haven't come out of this situation, having learned something or having grown. If Even if you think that, I don't think that's the case. I think, honestly, I think you really have learned something. You really have grown here, but, okay, so. And if anything, it's you have the experience of this situation under your belt. So even if you are not quite sure of what this situation meant for you or how it is to really deal with it or how it is to really move forward or really what it is best to do next time moving forward, you still have the experience of this situation under your belt ready to go so that moving forward in your life, you can pull on this experience to get you some sort of further understanding later on down the road. I'm not saying that you're ultimately going to manifest this situation, this type of situation again, necessarily. Um, but there is a sense of confusion in this that is not, that is really throwing me off. And I feel like the confusion that you might be feeling is what exactly did I really learn here? 
Like you have the emotional maturity and the emotional awareness to, to do what is right, to move forward in some way. And yet I still feel like you're questioning like, what the fuck was that? Like, I don't even, like, I can't, like, I, I guess I can make enough sense of it to move away to know that it's the best thing for me to do. But, like, what the actual fuck was that? Like, what really just happened here? <sighs> Whoa, you guys. All right, let's go. I'm not even going to try and pull again from this deck. I just want to dive into the clarity. Okay, five shuffles here. One. Two. And the first thing that I want to clarify is justice here. This is three. I kind of want to see if we can get a little bit of an energy or an understanding of what actually happened. This is four. And this is five. Okay. So justice. What happened? At the bottom of the deck, you have the King of Wands. With that, you have the Eight of Wands and the Three of Cups. So, okay, so we have, we have some sort of injustice here, right? We have something in which someone was running around or some uh, something or some being or whatnot, some sort of energy was allowed to run amok and just do whatever they wanted, King of Wands. You know what's interesting? I feel like, so, okay, so with that, you have the Three of Cups here, and that could be like, oh, somebody was running around cheating, right? And that may have been the case. However, I don't think that's what we're talking about here. I think we're talking about somebody coming out of that cycle. And I, I got that from the Three of Cups and the Eight of Wands because it feels like somebody set the record straight. Somebody spoke, somebody spoke up, communicated about something. I feel like, and that, and that allowed them, really, Orion? Seriously? Is it, are, are you gonna die though? Like, is it really that bad? They don't have any dry food down. I picked up their bowl this morning because it needed to be washed. And now the two of them are like, um, excuse me, where's our dry food? You hold your horses, okay? I'm busy. <laughs> anyway, I feel like somebody had, uh, had some form of communication that is kind of taking them away. That is opening up the doors, the gateways for them to move away from this Three of Cups energy. Or maybe it's just a realization. Maybe they didn't say anything. Maybe they just, maybe it just clicked in their head and they were like, oh shit, I gotta get out of here. This is not good. Because look, at the underneath the King of Wands, at the bottom of the deck, is the world. To the Eight of Swords. To the Eight of Cups, y'all. To the Four of Swords, Okay. To the Four of Swords, to the Emperor. So, and then we have the Queen of Wands at the bottom of the deck. Okay, look here. Um, and it's very interesting because while I was talking about this from the original deck, which in which we have the Six of Swords, I almost said, this is not an Eight of Cups energy. This is a Six of Swords energy. And to me, the difference there is... 
feel like there's a, a strong willingness to move forward with this Six of Swords energy, to move forward from rough waters to calmer waters, as opposed to the Eight of Cups, where there almost tends to be a, a, a bit of reluctance because of the fact that you've spent so much time developing whatever the Eight Cups would represent, right? On, on, working your way towards the Ten, only to find out it's not going to be the Ten, so you're just going to have to walk away from it. I just don't feel that's the way that this works in this situation. I feel like this is a realization where someone is like, they ain't trying to be a player no more or something like that. It was a mindset that they were stuck in, a belief system that they were stuck in, that they're realizing is not as fulfilling as they were thought it was going to be, or maybe they're just over it. Maybe you're just over it. Maybe you're just like, I'm tired of this. And so you've broken yourself free. There was a sense of coming to a contemplative energy, meditating on it, Four of Swords. You saying, you know what? I'm in control here, the emperor, and making an executive decision for yourself to create a situation that's better for you. More in, a, in greater alignment with you is what I just heard. Okay. All right. So then with that said, let's, let's talk about the hanged man then. Okay, because the hanged man is the change in perspective for you. So what's the hanged man? What changed here? Turning over a new leaf. What's the hanged man here? Please do it. Aha. Aha. Uh -huh. All right. So you have at the bottom of the deck, you do have the two of pentacles, which is talking about bringing physical balance into your life, into your uh, balance, into your physical existence. So there is an energy of with the hanged man here turning over a new leaf. You have the page of pentacles starting new. OK, so there's that energy of starting a new cycle um, in say. So what I was talking about before in terms of like, even if you don't quite understand what the lesson here is, you still have something under your belt to take with you as you move forward to potentially help you in the future, okay? Even though even though it may be difficult for you right now to really decipher or really pull out what the, the real wisdom is or the real knowledge or the real lesson is in this situation, there is still something within you that will help you in the future. You still have something to take from it, even if you don't quite understand what it is just yet, okay? Um, but also with this, you have the Five of Cups, to the Seven of Cups, to the Ace of Cups, all right? So this to me sounds like someone or feels like somebody is finally facing their sorrow, their emotions, their fear, their apprehensions, their insecurities. Five of Cups. I feel like whatever, we don't have the devil here. We don't have the devil here. Um, although we don't necessarily need it. This kind of feels like a little bit of a devil energy. There was some sort of addiction or codependency or something you were maybe trying to run away from, trying to hide from. Seven of, I'm sorry, five of cups. Because there was too much, um, it was too confusing, or you just didn't want to deal with it. I feel like there was an energy in the past of not wanting to deal with your pain and your sorrow, and so there was you were trying to escape from it. But the change in perspective has come into the situation where now it feels like you're ready to love yourself, Ace of Cups. You're ready to turn over a new leaf and face your emotions and stop running from things and start dealing with it. That brings us to the Three of Pentacles, that level, that energy of self-mastery, of working on yourself, right? So what's the Three of Pentacles, please, Spirit? What's this Three of Pentacles? Okay, we're back to the Eight of Swords here at the bottom of the deck, but one card has come out and it's the Nine of Wands. And what I'm getting from the Nine of Wands is what happened here is that you were tired of being so defensive. You were tired of having to look over your shoulder. You were tired of sur being surrounded by people that were... Okay, I'm going to be quite frank about this. Where You were tired of being around people that were just as low in, in vibration as you were. And so 
there was an energy of needing to feel like you have to defend yourself. I'm getting energies of not really feeling safe in your environment, not really feeling like the people around you were truly your friends or people that you could actually trust. But very specifically, there was a realization that you couldn't trust them or you didn't feel comfortable or safe around them because the energy or the vibe of the surrounding, of the setting of this, whatever this Three of Cups energy is, this celebration, this community, this, this friend group, uh, uh, whatever, social circle, hive mind mentality, the vibe of that situation was low. And y'all were all vibing with that low vibe energy. And so like, okay, that's fine. But um, in order for you to not be on the defensive so much, you had to realize and recognize that you had to break yourself out of this and move on from that. I really feel like you guys actually took the time to really sit down Eight of Swords, Eight of Cups, Four of Swords, you really sit down and think about it, contemplate it, meditate on it. And there was this like aha moment where you were just like, oh, well, no wonder the situation feels so shady. Okay. I actually want to get one more pull on this. The Three of Pentacles, which so far has the Nine of Wands on it. What else can you tell us about the Three of Pentacles spirit? So it looks like, here's the Two of Cups again. And now what the Two of Cups is representing to me is that, is reclaiming your uh, a better bond or a better relationship with yourself. Because it looks like somebody here has done some shadow work. The change in, not the change in perspective, but the work that's being done, the self-mastery here, is clarified by the Nine of Wands, which to me is saying you didn't want to be on the defensive any longer. Okay. It's come out. What else has come out with that? You have the Moon and the Three of Wands. Facing your shadow is what I heard when I saw that Moon. Facing shadow elements and processing it, which is part of your path. Or, and or, processing some shadow work so that you can move forward on your path. This also may be a situation in which y'all were just fed up with where you were. And thus, you did some shadow work or you're doing some shadow work in order to strengthen this bond with yourself and to be more independent, nine of swords, or two of cups, nine, I'm sorry, two of cups, nine of pentacles to the two of pentacles. Holy shit, there's the nine of swords. <laughs> The Nine of Swords to the Nine of Cups, though. To the Queen of Cups. Yes. Facing your fears. Bringing balance into your life. All right. Uh, last thing I want to look at, then. I want to look at the King of Cups and the Six of Swords. Okay. King of Cups, Six of Swords. Here, please, Spirit. What can you tell us about that? Yeah... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? I'm just going to leave it right there. Four of Swords is at the bottom of the deck again. I, this really does feel like, and, and, and maybe this is such a strong message or a, st a strong part of this message because this might be slightly out of character for this individual that we're speaking of. Normally, this person really wouldn't sit down and get deep about it and just like really think about it. Normally, they would be that one to escape from it, to push it away, to be like, nah, whatever, we're not going to fucking deal with that. Like, that's bullshit. I don't want to talk about that. I don't want to deal with that. Get that out of my face. Not anymore, or at least not this time. Something, I don't know what happened here, but something caused somebody to really take a step back and be like, okay, no, what the fuck really is going on here? Like, what is this shit that I find around me right now? Four of Swords, to the Eight of Cups at the bottom of the deck, to the Eight of Swords again, to the world. There you go, to the world, to the King of Wands, to the Tower, y'all, okay? This King of Wands energy, this sense of extreme selfishness, I feel like is out the window, out the door, like that's done. But it was coming from a place of a mental prison. It was some sort of defense mechanism that was developed and integrated 
And now you're seeing that those defenses are no longer protecting you. They're actually putting you more in danger is what I just felt. Or you're realizing that this defense mechanism is just as destructive, maybe even more destructive than facing the situation. King of Cups and the Six of Swords is also clarified by the Knight of Pentacles and the Sun. There was some sort of, and maybe, and maybe because it's represented by the sun, maybe there was some sort of extreme moment where things became glaringly clear to somebody or to you or whomever this reading is for. Like, because when the sun illuminates things for us, it does so in a way in which it's blinding sometimes. Like there's no way you can deny it. And it often you'll feel burned afterwards. But ultimately, when the sun burns you like this, I've been saying this for months now, when the sun burns you like this, it's one of the best burns you could experience in your life because that from there, you are aware of the wounding, you're aware of the danger, and now you can go through the process of healing. And I feel like, especially with this emotional maturity of the King of Cups here, I feel like someone recognizes that this is not going to be an overnight change, an overnight switch. And that's also why I feel like someone here is kind of like trying to move on, maybe in the shadow of darkness, or maybe not trying to be too seen, or at least not trying to make too big of a deal about it. Because that could only cause more issues. And I feel like those issues would come from the people around you that are still stuck in this lower vibrational energy and are like, what the fuck? You can't leave us. I feel like it's something that you don't even want to discuss. Okay. Closing Oracle Guidance. All right, I'm just going to go with it. My attention was first drawn to the Divine Feminine Oracle. Um, so, yeah, let's get that. I do feel like this isn't necessarily that we're talking, speaking to a woman or a feminine energy. I do, for some reason, feel like I feel strong masculine energy here. I feel like it's the masculine that's really going through this or a masculine individual for the most part that's going through this. But... Just because we're, I want to make it clear that just because we're using this deck doesn't mean that we're speaking specifically to an individual that represents or resonates with divine feminine energy. I feel like this is just a closing guidance, a closing oracle guidance from the divine feminine, from an unconditionally loving place, okay? That's the feeling that I'm getting from this so far. All right, five shuffles. One. Hi, little lizard. <laughs> Two. Three. Four. What's up, Orion? I'm but I'm still busy, kitty cat. Can you like give me five more minutes, please? Oh my goodness. This is five. What? You gonna have to wait, kid cat. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Alright, closing oracle guidance, please, spirit. In terms for this reading here. Let's try that again. I want to try that again because a few cards, three cards came out and I heard in my head two of them and I don't know which one's the, which two to take. So let's try that again. Let's try that again. Oh, here we go. All right. We have Mira Bai, the saint of true freedom. Love is what sets me free. I am married to my own soul. Or I'm married, yeah, I'm married to my own soul. Sorry, the sunlight's coming in there, but. Focus, maybe. Uh, here we go. All right. Mira Bai. 
Oh, this is not in. Now, now he's chasing the lizard. Oh Lord in heaven. Uh, here we go. Okay. Okay. So when your soul collects, when your soul selects this card, often without even realizing it. We make choices based on external expectations on how we think other people will, per will perceive our actions. Mirabai is about doing what's right for you and no one else. Ultimately, only you can know what needs to be done or said. You have this one brief life and every second of it matters. Mirabai is about standing up for what you know is right for you even if others will judge you for it. The fear of being persecuted can convince us not to be true to who we really are. There is a love, though, that's far larger than human constructs and cultural values. Love isn't ethical. Love isn't bound by any idea of what's socially acceptable. Love is what sets us free from the expectations that bind us. Love, in whatever way it finds us, asks us to stay loyal to our own soul. Any outside force or person who asks us to betray our most intimate relationship with the divine isn't acting out of love. For Mirabai, her true husband wasn't the one she was married to. The love that made her brave, the love that inspired her every poem and, and action was a divine love for Krishna. So the laws that bound her to the strict expectations of being a wife didn't actually apply to her. Love asks us to look at what really matters to us and what we truly value. And love asks us to bravely defy expectations in order to be true to ourselves. Love's, love wants us to marry our own soul. Yeah, guys, I'm glad I did a, a, a second poll or I redid that because that was perfect. All right, so there you have it. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I love you all so very much. I hope you have a wonderful hump day, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah? Take care. Bye. <laughs>